Liam Adams, a little bit of pressure going in today. Lyndon Hall was uh, champion of the bit to try to get a win over here today. <laughs> yes, um, last night at presentation she uh, threw out the challenge. I think last year she ran about 1940 something and I said I was shooting for about 21 and she's like, nah, you have to beat my time. And uh, I went down and uh, was taking the times for the uh, for our women's team and uh, saw that she ran 1901. So she uh, put the pressure on a little bit today. So she made me run a bit quicker than I wanted to, yeah. So Liam, what did you end up getting? I think it was uh, 18.52, I think, maybe. So just pipped her in the end. <laughs> so we've got a nine-second victory there to Liam Adams, and I think he's going to take it today because we'll now move on to the other topic, which is uh, last Sunday on the Gold Coast. So a war of attrition out there, wasn't it, in the men's marathon at the Commonwealth Games? Oh, definitely. Um, those conditions were absolutely brutal, and uh, we felt pretty good for... The first half or so, um, we started picking up the pace and we're running a quick a quick pace for a bit and uh, we'll drop in the pack a bit. It started splitting up and I think it was about a pack of six and then uh, Callum just started ramping it up and uh, just blew everyone up. So there's like 208 marathon runners which just were struggling and falling off the pack just before I was and uh, I knew I was probably, I made a bad choice but I was made the choice to kind of stick on the pack because it was a bit of a headwind on the way back and I thought if I was solo into this headwind I was going to battle but I uh, probably wish I had have uh, stuck with uh, my own pace in that because I, I blew up and really struggled so uh, the last probably 14 k's is probably the slowest 14 k's I've ever ran in any race so I think I was about four minute k's towards the end. So. But as we know that 14 k's is the business end of any marathon. Now you know when you come back to Melbourne and look at the performance, fifth in the Commonwealth Games in 2.21 in pretty rough conditions, you'd have to be reasonably happy with that wouldn't you? Uh, definitely happen, uh, happy with the uh, position but um, and there's little bits of regrets of what I could have done to maybe change things up tactically and I think I was in with a good chance to get a medal and uh, I was just so exhausted and I could just see that medal running away from me comfortably and I could, couldn't do anything about it so I was a little bit disappointed with that but uh, fifth is an improvement on Glasgow so I'm happy with that, yeah. And we were talking off air about what was happening over that last 10k or so where, where runners were pulling off or slowing down then restarting and your position was changing all the time. It was, yes. So. Um, I was in third for a little bit and then I got overtaken, um, I think it might have been Mutai at the time and I was watching him get away and like that's third place just there, 50 metres in front of me, try and catch him just but I couldn't do anything about it and then just because that front pack blew up so much we just, just absolutely killed ourselves in that um, stretch from about 20 to 25k. Uh, other guys which were a couple of minutes behind us just started working their way through the field and catching us so I got pushed into fifth or sixth and then I saw one guy pull out in front of me and then I heard that first place had pulled out so I'm just like that's third place just in front of me again and then another guy came through I think uh, it might have been uh, the Scottish guy Simpson and uh, he he came through and he ended up getting the bronze and I think he still had to pass a few guys towards the end to get that bronze. So, yeah, it was a strange race. It was absolutely brutal. Just the carnage that we saw at the end with Callum and a few other runners is just crazy. And I think it was just a battle to get to the line and it was for me. Yeah, now the, the event has probably hit the headlines for the wrong reasons in many ways too with, with what happened to Callum and obviously the slow response and all those sort of things. What was your take on the whole, whole day though? Um, yeah, it was, it's tough. Um, I think we were just very unlucky with the conditions. If it was any other day of the, that month, we would have all been fine and tactically I think we would have been able to survive that. Um, but I think we were just very unlucky. I was speaking to locals, I was speaking to Shelley and it was a rare, rare day to get that type of conditions in uh, April. So um, yeah, just very unlucky and if it had it been any other day of that week, we would have been fine. So, yeah, Now, talking about Mike too, because unfortunately he's copped a bit of flack too for, for not stopping and assisting. I don't know if he's a trained medical doctor or not, but I don't think he is. So, yeah, yet again, what did that do for the team? Was it a little bit deflated at the end or just the mere fact that he won the gold, everyone was on a high? I think everyone was on a high that he won and uh, you do hear those type of things and it's, it's, a, it's quite annoying. Just It's taken away from Shelley's 
brave effort. It was tough for him. He was struggling with cramps and all that. He said he was struggling with his hands, and I'm pretty sure when he was crossing that line, I think he was going, going to clap like that. He's missed and gone like this. So uh, I think that shows that he was battling a bit. So, um, yeah, it's just brutal effort, and he, he was the one who ran it the smartest out of the lot of us. So he comes away with the gold. So it was all credit to him. So I don't think anyone can really take away from Shelley's effort. It's unfortunate what happened to Callum and that, and he did look so good. He looked so good before that. So it's just strange what happened, and um, I'm pretty sure he'll be using that for fire in the belly, and I think that's going to make him a strong runner. He'll be the next marathon he does. He's definitely under 210. We all know that, and he's an absolute class. He's shown it at the Olympics, at World Championships, and stuff like that. So it just unfortunately didn't work for him at uh, Glad uh, at uh, Commonwealth Games in uh, Gold Coast. So yeah. We're all very proud of you. What's next though for Liam Adams? It's great to see you here by the <laughs> way today. We didn't expect it. Great to see you. Great to see you out there in the Essendon Colours again. Where do you go from here, Liam? Um, well, yeah, today uh, I was kind of uh, probably probably shouldn't have ran and uh, I hadn't ran all week. This was my first day. So my warm-up was my first run since uh, at Gold Coast. So um, And that was an a that was an absolute battle in itself and I thought, oh geez, I've made a bad decision here. So probably a, the wrong decision in running today, but um, just need to help the team out where we've got a few guys down. So um, yeah, just had to try and help them out today and try and get some points. And I think we might've got one or two points. So hopefully that helps us with the relegation battle that we'll be in today, uh, this year. So, um, but yeah, at the moment I'll just be having a bit of fun, just slowly building up and then maybe looking for a marathon. Um, I don't know. Anywhere between September and November, I'll be looking for a marathon. Just don't know which one yet. So maybe local or maybe international. We'll just see. So <laughs> we can expect to see you at a bit of XCR for the year? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll be uh, running most XCR races, yeah. Liam Adams, as usual, pleasure talking to you and so well done on your effort at Gold Coast. Cheers. Thanks, Tim.